What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is another episode of Nerf Stereotypes. In this episode, we're covering the low light, no light operator. Ninja, operator, perhaps try hard, maybe all of them. We go. Oh, give an operator some heads up, bro. You're gonna ruin my pupils. These, these eyeballs right here are specifically tuned for low light situations so I can see better than anybody else. So when you put your studio lights on in my face, you gotta, you gotta give me some heads up, bro. Need some sunglasses in here, it's, it's bright. Okay, I'm gonna go over my gear, which is specifically tailored to low light, no light situations, you know, because I'm an operator that typically operates at night, like a stealthy ninja guy. Yeah, it's difficult to make out all my gear because everything's black by design, so everything blends in. Blending in and being stealthy, primary theme here, bros. So, gear, let's start out with the blaster. This is a modified Nerf Strife, uh, basic internal mods. Then on the outside, I have the Worker Scar Kit because it looks freaking sick nasty, and it has all these awesome rails for my, my lights. A toy or a replica EOTech because it's optimized for like low light, no light, um, because of the giant field of view there. Some of those scopes are super cool and stuff, but when it's dark outside, it's really difficult to, to see through them. Operator's choice, faux show. Um, up front are my torches or my lights. These are affixed to the worker rail or the F10555 rails that are secured to my SCAR kit. Lighting is obviously key for a no light, low light situation. So I can shine a light on somebody else without being entirely visible, you know, because the environment is dark. Surefire ripoff I got on GearBest, a real Surefire, and then a stream light up top. Why three? Because what if one or two goes down? You, you need a light at all times. Like if you don't have a flashlight, you're just not an operator. At least uh, not a low light, no light operator. So when I activate all my lights at once, you know, tons of light, bro. And with the three dots here, we're, we're getting some predator style stuff up in here, which just looks super intimidating. Is three excessive? Perhaps, but uh, whatevs. The more light, the better, generally, especially when you're shining it directly in somebody's face, they can't see at all. Um, so then they're pretty much blind. And the streamlight up top even has this function, which is even more annoying. So as far as distracting and uh, maintaining visibility, I can turn one on solid and then flash the other. So I can see at all times, but that's still super disorienting for whoever I'm shooting at. So yeah. Is it cheating? Is it being a dick? Maybe, but I call it tactics, bro. <laughs> and down below is a vertical grip also by Worker. And that's because when you have all these lights in the suppressor and all this weight up here, you actually need this to support the blaster. It's a little, you know, easier to manipulate quickly. That's not as much low light. That's more of the, the operator part of my uh, title here. I'm a fan of the C-clamp grip as much as anybody else, but when you have this much gear, it's just so much easier to have that nice comfy vertical grip. <laughs> then on this side, I have a green laser pointer to help with, you know, low light accuracy, bro. And that's um, tactically zip tied to the side because I don't have a mount for this particular light. Although this green light is like stupid, stupid strong and the range is absurd. Don't want to damage this camera sensor by shining that right up in there, but that's what it looks like. You know, a green laser pointer. Freaking left arm getting fatigued with all this weight up here. <laughs> Then up in the all the way front, I have a detachable suppressor, also by Worker, that uh, threads on to the Worker flash hider right here. Why a suppressor? Of course, because it lowers your sound signature, and um, part of low light, no light situations is being a ninja and not being detected. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Well, why would you run around with three flashlights and a laser pointer on if you're trying to be like stealthy? Because that's like a giant beacon for my location. You don't just turn the flashlight on and keep running around with it. You only turn it on when you need it, then you turn it off, continue into stealth mode. But generally, the suppressor stays on because once you have a can, like, why would you take it off, really? As you can tell, the blaster is set up for, uh, you know, night missions and stuff, all the lights with the vertical grip. This is just comfy, man. I could sit back and just shoot people for days. Then you don't even have to, like, look down your sight. You can just point the laser pointer and go like that. Oh, man. You could find one of those hoverboards and just hoverboard around doing this. Oh, that, that's, that would be fun and relaxing. I'm getting off topic, but that's the uh, blaster. Operator's choice. Pretty much any M4 or AR platform, um, you know, stylish blaster fits the operator role. If you're one of those AK peasants, um, don't talk to me. You're not an operator. You're not an operator, bro. So that's the blaster. Now I'll go over uh, my gear. Gear is obviously the same theme, being a low light operator uh, that's balancing low light stealthiness along with operations and having gear. Design concept, uh, low profile and slim so I can move very quietly and very quickly. Uh, all the gear and bulkiness of like a traditional operator isn't optimal for getting around like super stealthy. Top down, a uh, black baseball cap, super generic because um, I have light colored hair, and that's not as tactical as black. Moving down, a uh, black scarf thing. It does help when I'm running a tax sling so it doesn't uh, start chafing. Th that's annoying. But beyond that, if I need to go like incognito, I can raise it. Boom, who's shooting at me now? I can't tell because he has a mask on. See what it did there? Freaking, freaking ninja. Oh, now, now you can tell I'm Frank. Moving down again, Nerf tack vest, uh, because tactics. Why not a plate carrier with a bunch of extra mags? It's a little too bulky, and obviously I need some tactics, so I can't just run a basic shirt. So a uh, solid compromise, although I might get a black permanent marker and 
you know, scratch out the orange parts because that's not as stealthy. But uh, you see the, the color coordination? Yeah, is that, is that just dorky or is that tactical? Nah, that's tactical, bro. <laughs> but I don't carry anything on my vest, again, to lower my weight and to lower my bulkiness so I can move stealthily and quickly and tactically. Down to my belt rig on my left side, I have two spare magazines for my Strife. These are the Worker P mags filled up with uh, white waffle head darts. White because when I'm shooting at you, you're gonna be so distracted by anything else to really pay attention to the darts in the air. But when they're white in the air, I can track them a little bit easier. So if I need to adjust, um, you know, I can. The contrast being white because the dark environment at low light, no light, you know. Both mags are carried in this hard shell magazine carrier for the belt, which is pretty cool. Designed around the Firearm 308 magazines, the wider ones, it fits really well for our Nerf mags. Of course, this is for the, the low light operations where we're going in and out, so it's not like a full game or anything. Me and my group are like the assassin group. We go in, we take out the main Zambi leaders or the human leaders, whatevs, and then we, we, we leave. So we don't need a ton of ammo. And operators don't miss, bro. Then over on this side, I have a high-speed gear taco pouch. Uh, that's a 3X pistol pouch. A little excessively built for the Nerf needs, but a super cool pouch. On the outside here, I have two flashlights in case those uh, three go down. So I have five total because you have to have a flashlight when you're at night. Worst case scenario, I'll whip out some zip ties or some duct tape and uh, you know secure it firmly to the blaster so I can tactically use my lights. And it's also super distracting to zombies when you click it on and just like throw it like a beacon. Imagine it just spinning in the air. <laughs> Imagine it just spinning in the air like that. If you're a Zambi, pretty solid distraction, so those are nice to have. And in the center here, I have an extra suppressor. Why an extra? In case that one goes down, bro. Why would you throw a suppressor? Um, a distraction, you know, there's, a good, there's good reasons, like this. Tactical decoy. Look at the cat chase the laser pointer. <laughs> Stupid. Meow. Yeah, that's a legitimate reason to throw the suppressor. But then after it's gone, it's gone. So now I have a backup. So boom, freaking tactics, man. You can't have enough suppressors, bro, or flashlights. Then wedged into the belt here is the worker mini katana. I got like 150 comments on what it's called. It's like a waka something. And waka miniature katana, yeah. For the super elite stealth kills, bro. Even with a suppressor, there is a sound signature, especially with a, a flywheel blaster. So I'm running around and if I need to get a stealth kill, just quickly do that. Then in the back here, I have a dump pouch, uh, not really to dump magazines. I actually just keep extra tack gear in it, like my Barska night vision scope. Or not a scope, it's a, it's a monocle, so I can, you know, look through the night at long range. Since the Nerf night vision scope doesn't really work, this, this actually does. It's not really practical while you're, like, attacking somebody to, like, hold it up and do that or anything. It's more for recon, so right before we hit someone, we can kind of glance around, scope out the, the scenario, plan where we're gonna flank and all of that, and then tactically insert. So, a super tactical pros. Also back here, um, tactical shades, because in environments like this, where there's lights freaking everywhere, you know, my, my, my retinas are gonna explode here. So uh, that, that's great. It's pretty much like the reverse night vision. Some people turn on night vision. My eyeballs are pretty much hardwired into night vision mode. So to go into like a, a daytime mode, then I have to turn on my shades. And another piece of gear, this guy called Doc sent me, which is super cool. It looks like a traditional Nerf grenade or like a normal one, but it's been modified inside to be sort of like a flashbang. It's pretty much just a glow beacon. You know, it'll just be easier if I just show you. So imagine the lights are completely out and we're about to run into a house and you know, pew pew everybody, but we can't see. Ideally, we could just turn all the lights on but you know you can't touch light switches when you're tactically inserting because some of those like terrorist dudes wire up all their light switches to bombs so then you insert you hit the switch and the whole thing goes boom that's not cool bro so this guy not only illuminates the entire room but it's also super disorienting imagine if you're hiding in a corner with an ak because obviously an ak peasant's the only person that's going to do this you're in the dark your eyes have adjusted to the darkness and you're waiting for you know me and my team to like insert so you can pick off a few people like a little coward this guy yeah just holy balls. Okay, you throw that in there, pretty much like a flashbang, super disorienting, and when we turn around, everything's all lit up for us, so we can see exactly who we're about to just pew pew. Yeah, so thanks Doc for setting that up. The last thing here is generally we use for evac for helicopter lifts and stuff. We're running around like operators, you know, in all black, so when we have to get picked up, sometimes it's, it's tricky to see people who are specifically designed to blend in everywhere. So um, enter light stick, so. supposed to shake it. Hold on. Oh. That just feels so natural for some reason. Yeah, and then we can run around with this clipped on to identify ourselves as a friendly to our other friendly who is trying to pick us up. I know what you're thinking. Hey, idiot, that's going to give away your position. It's only for pickup, bro. So that's after we've eliminated all of the, the people we're supposed to eliminate. Nobody else is out there. We just need to get picked up. And walking is 
hard. So you know, we radio you in, we, we bust our light sticks, you know, bust it out, and they get picked up in style. And that is super cool. Yeah, but I think I've covered all my gear. Oh, just normal black pants, black shirt, black gloves, because tactics, you know, blending in, blending into the night. Some people don't like the night. They're scared of the night. I am the night. You should be scared. <sighs> because once you see the, the, the three lights of death approach, it's too late, bro. You're out. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. Yeah, GG, bruh. And if we miss and we don't actually shoot you, at least you're gonna go blind. Or you'll at least have permanent retina damage, so boom. We win either way. Wham, Mr. Operator Guy, you're using a flywheel blaster. Those are super loud. Obviously, we're gonna hear you coming, idiot. Not if you have the Operator app on your, on your smartwatch, bro. Stealth mode countdown initiated, so yeah. Modified nerf blasters are pretty loud, but then the app activates and it gets a whole lot quieter. Stealth mode, bro. Same velocity, same motor RPM, so I'm still shooting over 100 FPS with my modified strife, but I'm a freaking operator. Super stealthy, super stealthy, pew pewing for days, bro. Yeah. With this app, uh, Springer Peasants ain't got nothing on me, bruh. Bruh. Yep, I'm the low light, no light operator, and that's my loadout if you're interested in being this type of operator. There's uh, some of your research or all of your research done. Boom. Cool, we're done. Can you turn these freaking lights out now? Oh, thank you, Brosif. I can see. Thank you. Retina damage is a real thing, bro. Bro. That's the stereotype of the low light, no light operator. If you have a stereotype you'd like to see in a future episode, leave a comment in the section below. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.